Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm Fielding Shredder. Welcome to my channel. This video is going to be all about sponsorship. I'm going to talk about my sponsors, my current sponsors, how I acquired them, and so some of this information you might be able to use to get sponsored yourself. Now, this is just how I did it. This is not necessarily the best way or the only way. I'm certainly, you know, been doing this for a while and I've learned a lot of things along the way. And, you know, you may know some things I don't know. So if there's anything that you could give us a pro tip on that maybe I haven't talked about or covered, leave it in a comment down below and all of us can learn and grow to be better. So what I'm going to do is just talk about, kind of tell you a story. I'm going to talk about how I got my first sponsor and just, you know, in chronological order, go throughout my career and talk about all of them. So you'll see quite a few wardrobe changes on this video. Well, the first one I'm going to talk about is Trackstar Motorworks. So we're going to rewind the clock about 10 years in the very beginning of my drifting dreams. And we're going to go back to when I was in college. So I had just bought my first 240. I was ready to get to do something with it. And I was friends with a guy named Ethan Hopkins. Super good friend of mine, still friends today, obviously, and still a sponsor of my program. So he has been the longest running supportive person and sponsor in my drifting career. So huge thank you to you, Ethan, and all of your efforts throughout the years. I really appreciate it. And I know that I would not be here where I am today without your help, especially in the very beginning. So Ethan and I were friends. He was into drag racing at the time. He drag raced Hondas, which I wasn't the biggest fan of. In fact, our first kind of outing, I was talking trash to him about how a front wheel drive car is not cool and could never be fast. And honestly, he was just so cool about it and relaxed. He was like, okay, that's you know how you feel about it. Just take a ride with me one day and maybe we'll change your mind. It was a little Honda hatchback, completely stock looking on the outside, very unassuming, very simple interior, no window tint, stock wheels, stock body. I thought there's no way this thing could be fast until he got it on the highway and hit the gas. And then I just got shoved back into my seat and the lines of the road just blurred around me. It was the first time I'd been in a car that was really, truly, blindingly fast. I mean, my heart rate goes up, my adrenaline through the roof, and <laughs> Uh, needless to say, I didn't talk any trash after that, and Ethan was quite, quite happy with his ability to scare me properly without being cocky or a jackass about it in the beginning. So, after that we kind of got to talking, I talked about my car and how I would love to, you know, start to go drifting, and I wanted to build it into a race car of sorts, and I didn't really have the means to do that. Well, Ethan is a fantastic mechanic, and he had started his own shop at the time. Really small, you know, two bay garage where he's just doing what he can to wrench on cars and make ends meet and pay his bills. And he was very kind to allow me to bring my car into the shop and just kind of work on it. So this is where I'm going to break down. There's three different kinds of sponsorships. So make sure that when you're trying to acquire a sponsor, you think about what kind of sponsorship you want and what you can give each other because that's very important. So the three kinds, and I don't know if this is the professional way to talk about it, but this is what I'm going to break it down like. You've got sponsorship, you've got partnership, and then you've got a charity. Okay, so let's talk about what those mean. A sponsorship is a shop or an individual or a company that is going to give you something in exchange for pure marketing. So you're supposed to make posts and tag them. You're supposed to do media, whether it's video or photos or both. You're supposed to talk about them, hand out brochures, try and send them business so that what they're giving you can grow into profit for them. So that's gonna be your typical sponsorship, all right? That's gonna require a sticker on the car. Depending on their level of involvement, you know, will determine the size. Now you have a partnership, which is totally different. That's gonna be where a company or a shop is going to ask you to maybe sell their parts or their product in exchange for getting free product or, or monies or kind of a split profit there. So like an oil company, for example, might give you a case of oil or a pallet of oil. And in exchange, they want you to sell oil using either a coupon code or you know a link from your website or social media back to theirs and that way they can track how many of sales are coming directly from you and your efforts in order to determine how profitable or how quality of a partnership it is so that's a partnership 
And then the final one is just a charity, okay? And these are the best to get, but the hardest probably. This is where someone just really likes you and they feel like you're doing great things for one reason or another, and they want to help you out in some way that doesn't require any real reciprocation, okay? If you just stick a sticker on your car, that's very little reciprocation. It doesn't really do a whole lot. You might talk about the company or the brand a little bit, but you're not generating income for them or turning it into a trackable metric. So that would be a, a, a rich guy that just wants you to do great things. He gives you some cash or some parts or whatever the case is, lets you drive his car. With Ethan, in the beginning, it was pretty much just a charity. You know, I wasn't really generating any net income for him. I was actually costing him money because any hour that I'm in the shop working on my car, whether he's helping or not, is time away from his lift or his tools that he could be using to earn an income himself. So it was very, very kind of him in the beginning to do that. You know, I didn't have any Facebook friends or Instagram followers. I didn't have any kind of presence, right? I was just in the beginning. It was purely just a kid with a dream and a really good friend that was nice enough to help share that with him. So that's gonna be the beginning. And then obviously I want to make sure that Ethan's Trackstar Motorworks brand will grow. So it's my job and my responsibility to talk to everybody I know, tell them to go get work done with Ethan and try and turn that into some sort of income for him to where it's kind of a, a great relationship, a symbiotic relationship, if you will. That worked out great with him. He was very helpful getting my car going, helping me get it all worked out and ready to go for the track. And then I was off drifting and burning up tires and doing what I could to learn this sport that I love so much that I knew absolutely nothing about. Now that moves me to my next partnership or sponsorship, and that's gonna be Careless Original, as you can see here. So a young fielding shredder was at a Lone Star Drift event, and I'm just out there driving my car, figuring out drifting and doing what I can. And Evan Williams was setting up his new brand, Careless. He had a booth set up, a clothing and apparel line that he was trying to get this business off the ground. And he liked me for whatever reason. I guess he liked how I drive or my attitude or a mix of both. And we just started, started kind of chatting and he was like, yo, I want to sponsor someone. I want to have a partnership with an athlete. Why don't we help each other out? And I said, okay, great. What can I do? And he said, wear my shirts, wear my brand and, and display this kind of image to make it cool. And in exchange, I'll give you free shirts and you know, kind of give me a, a cooler wardrobe than the clothes I was wearing at the time. So. I'm like, all right, fine. I don't really have any sponsors, so sure, let's try it out. So I did, and you know, we've been great friends ever since. He's still a current sponsor to my program and, and been awesome ever since. I know that he is a kind of struggling business owner like myself, and, and so I have a lot of respect for what he does. It takes a lot of work, a lot of effort. You really don't make many dollars per hour because you have to put so much into it, especially in the beginning stages. So it's kind of a mutual understanding that we both wanted to help each other out and see each other grow and we just got along really good. So that was where that first kind of partnership, I would say, started with Careless. From there, you know, I'm still kind of learning and growing and figuring out drifting, and I started to meet some companies that I wanted to work with, or at least I thought at the time, and those turned out to be bad experiences. So I'm gonna be completely and brutally honest on this video, and some of my sponsors may or may not like that, and I just, I promised myself when I started this channel that I was going to share with you guys 100% of the truth. So whether that's good or bad, I think that that has a lot of merit and a lot of value in terms of a learning experience because that's really what this is all about, right? Trying to figure out how to get through this world as slippery as possible without costing too much money and having as, as much fun as you can without pissing too many people off. So yeah, I, I worked with a couple of companies that you know I thought would be a great fit and you know, it turned out to not be so much. And the reason why I think a lot of it was because of poor communication and a misunderstanding of what kind of partnership or sponsorship it was, right? So it's important that you establish that in the beginning, exactly finding out what each party is wanting to put into the program and what they're expecting back out. Because expectation is reality. And that's what's really important with this whole thing is that each party feels really happy and feels like they're getting something from the relationship, not so much just like they're being used or leached off of and it's not really symbiotic. So that's very important when you're reaching out for sponsorship yourself. 
you need to keep a clear mind on that and, and really communicate. You know, I encourage you to communicate to the moon about what you can you know, give each other and what you would expect in exchange. And really, the best way to do it is put it in writing. I know that that doesn't feel great sometimes. It feels maybe too professional or you, know, you don't want to be so hardcore about it or whatever. But the truth is, when it's in writing and you both have a copy of it, then you can go back and read it and say, look, on this date, we agreed on this. These are my deliverables is the word that you usually use. So this is what I'm giving to you. And this is what I'm receiving in exchange. And I've given you X number of, you know, I've given you A through Z of this, and you failed to come up on your end with the things that you provided me or you said you were going to provide. So again, it can get a little muddy in the, you know, communication process if you don't talk about that. So you really want to make sure that that is established up front. And I can't stress enough how important communication is with your partnerships and sponsorships, especially in the beginning. So a couple of other shops that I tried to work with, tried to get some work done, didn't work out. Uh, you know, it was, it was a difficult time. I was going through some issues with my car, some mechanical issues. I was struggling to both come up with the, the cash to pay for the fix and all, as well as, you know, the time and the shop space in order to fix the car itself. So I think both ends of the, the side of things were kind of failing, unfortunately. From there, I actually went back to Ethan and I said, hey man, you know, I knew I kind of strayed from the nest, so to speak, and I've made some mistakes, now I'm in a bit of a pickle, can you help me? And again, Ethan came to bat and said, yeah man, I got you, no problem. Bring your car in, we'll get it fixed up. And he did, and it was fantastic, and we got the car fixed, and he said, hey, I've got this friend, Caesar. He owns a body shop. Let's get your car painted and looking good, and you can really represent my brand well. And I said, that's a great idea. Who wouldn't want a free paint job, right? So I did. I met with Caesar, and he was a super cool guy. And you know, I'm, I'm like, I just put a new body kit on the car. I'm starting this new season for Lone Star. Now it is called Lone Star Drift at this point. And now we're going to have competition, so things are getting a little bit more serious. I want the car to look as good as I can. But I want to, you know, I know that drifting is very abusive. It's going to smash the car. I'm going to have to have panels repaired and repainted and stuff. So I just wanted a simple paint job, just a single stage, regular paint job that would be easy to match and I could maybe find duct tape in the same color and that sort of thing. And Caesar, now looking back, was, was very wise and said, no, F that, we're not doing that. I'm going to paint this thing as dope as I can get it. You know, I'm going to make it a candy paint job. It's going to be five stages. It's going to sparkle and shine and look incredible. And don't worry about matching it or don't worry about repainting it. He's like, I'll get it. You just pay for materials and I'll cover the labor and the, the work. So I said, that sounds great. Awesome. He said, what color do you want? I said, I've always wanted a really nice purple. So he, you know, did his own custom mix. It was a five stage paint job. No joke. It was a black primer and then a silver metallic base. And then there was the purple candy. And then on top of that was a clear with pearl. So that's four and then about seven layers of clear on top of that. So five stages. I don't know. I couldn't even count how many layers of paint it was, but it looked incredible. I mean, when it came out, I was gorgeous. I was blown away. I didn't even want to drive it because I was afraid of crashing it. And he said, don't worry about it. Go have fun. You know, put on a good show, represent my brand because I want people to see what I am capable of doing. And that's what I didn't really understand. You know, I'm like, why, if you're a painter, do you want to paint it this expensive, crazy color that you, that's hard to match and costs a lot to repair? But it was because he wanted to show off his work, right? He didn't, it wasn't an insurance job. It wasn't a stock car. This is a race car. It's supposed to look cool. And honestly, that was kind of a pivotal moment for me that kind of turned things around. It really kicked off my, my program or my drifting dreams and got me some attention. You know, people started to notice because the car was so visually stunning. And so I took that and I ran with it. I used blue chrome graphics. I started to put a lot of, you know, effort in studying into the style of things. Some of you may remember some choice <laughs> mistakes that I made in the past with body modifications. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video, but needless to say, this is the best my car had ever looked at the time. And it was really great to be able to show it off. So now I've got a nice big track star sticker on it. I've got a careless sticker. Uh, we're shooting purple dice on the trunk with the boys at careless. And Caesar was very happy to see that the car was so well received and everyone really loved it. From there, Aaron and I started to kind of become friends because now I've been showing up to the events more often and more regularly. 
So Aaron Losey, you know, the guy who runs Lone Star Drift, a great friend of mine, but it wasn't always that way. And the first time you meet him, it's a little bit strange. And I now realize that it's because he meets so many people that just some random guy who's at his an event for the first time coming up and saying, hi, I've seen you on the channel, this or that. He doesn't really put a lot of stock or a lot of weight into that relationship in the beginning because he's had so many people come in, think they're going to be a superstar or something like that, and then just fizzle out or burn out, and then they are no longer friends. And so he doesn't want to mess with putting any energy into that relationship. Instead, now I've been coming to, to his drift events for three or four years. I've made it a little bit of a presence. I've got a nicer looking car now. My skills are developing. And so now he's like, okay, I'll give you a shot. You know, the first time, if he forgets your name, <laughs> the first time you meet him, don't take any offense to that. He didn't remember my name for the first year and a half that we knew each other. So that's just Aaron. And uh, so from there, I started to kind of pick up more uh, attention, right? So now I'm able to kind of ask for sponsorship a little bit easier. So I would say, oh, oh, sorry, on Caesar's relationship, that was more of a, I would say, sponsorship where he is providing a service. I just had to pay for materials, which we established up front. And then from there on out, I was just supposed to advertise for him and try and get him business. And I did. I sent him a couple paint jobs a year for the years that he was my sponsor for my paint job. So that was kind of how that relationship worked. Uh, so Lone Star Drift, I do consider a sponsor. Now, Aaron was not giving me any cash or any free entry fees or any kind of, you know, promotional stuff, but instead he was giving me a platform to be a driver and become what I've kind of wanted to be. So it wasn't a sponsorship at first, but I do know now that it was a major asset to my career and my you know, ability to kind of showcase my talents and work on gaining more and more partnerships and sponsorships. So it really kind of turned around that year when I went to SEMA and now I'm, you know, walking around, I've got a cool looking car, I've gotten some media work, which was with Max, Max first. I don't have a shirt of his, but he was a young up and coming wannabe photographer at the time. And you know, he and I started to work together and create some media. And, you know, it was great for me because I was able to kind of show off for my current sponsors and also kind of start to tell a story. And it was great for him because he got to learn how to use a camera, how to shoot certain things and work with someone that he liked. We were friends on a, you know, sport that he was interested in. So it wasn't shooting weddings or shooting commercials that were lame. It was something like drifting, which is awesome. So here he is learning to use a camera. You know, the very first video he shot, I bought a little cheap T2i for 500 bucks with a couple lenses. And I gave it to him and I said, let's do something. Let's make some magic. And you know, our first few videos, of course, were learning experiences. I think they were fantastic for the time and the equipment that we had and the, the experience. But obviously, he has become a major, major player in the drifting marketplace for photography and videography. So he kind of springboarded his career off of our friendship, filming me for a very discounted rate, oftentimes free, doing all the editing and stuff completely free for me. So thank you, Max, again, for all of your help in the beginning stages. I know we kind of helped each other out. But now look at him. He's got a red camera that's like 50 grand. He's got a camera car with a giant crane on it. I don't even know how much that thing cost. He's got a team of people that he works with. He's got a client list that has more zeros in it than I can count. And, um, you know, he's making a living and making a good living working his ass off. Max works harder than probably anyone I know and even harder than I do. And it shows, you know, his work is fantastic because of that. And his ability to gain new clients and buy new equipment is because he has such a strong work ethic. You know, he, there's nothing special about Max. He's not got some crazy natural given talent that makes him this incredible photographer, videographer. He just works his ass off. He learns, he researches, he does what it takes to produce the work. And that's a big part. You know, if you're a photographer or a videographer, you've got to produce content. You, good or bad, whether it's your best work or not, if you have a deadline to meet, you've got to meet it. And whether it's your best or not, you've got to still produce that content in order to continue to grow. Okay. I know a lot of vid videographers and, and photographers that I've talked to, they get something 90% there and then they're like, ah, I'm not going to post that. It's not the best or it doesn't look as good as someone they idolize. 
And that's not the point. The point is to produce the photo, produce the work, and continue to grow and learn from your mistakes. So here I am going to SEMA. I got my Lone Star Drift shirt on. I'm walking around, chatting with people. And I was able to acquire a couple partnerships there. So one was XXR Wheels. And at the time, I had just bought a bunch of wheels. I bought 14 XXRs just because they were cheap and they looked pretty good and they were easy to get. And I went and chat with them at the booth and said, hey, I, got, I like you guys' wheels. We just kind of started BSing at the booth. I gave him my business card and I said, you know, if you guys want to work together in the future, that'd be great. And he said, no problem. So I got Frank's info. He gave me his card. You know, not the time to really pitch somebody on a new partnership, I feel like. Uh, you can do it yourself your, however you want to do it. But in my experience, I think it's better to just establish a relationship, put a face to a name, and then in the future follow up with that and kind of chat about what you're trying to do together. You know, they've got a million people talking to them, a million things going on. They've got meetings every single day. They've got a, so many things going on. And that goes with every company that is at SEMA. It's a, it's a very bustling time. And it's not the time to like sit down and be like, oh, yeah, I have a 240SX that has an SR20 and I need $10,000. It's not, <laughs> that's not how you do that. So I just said, you know, hey, I've already invested in your brand. I've bought, you know, two grand worth of wheels and I would love to run your newest set. And we just kind of went from there. So they did sponsor me a set of wheels. It was um, 10 wheels at first. They gave them to me completely free. And then that relationship has continued to grow. You know, the next year I got 12 wheels. The next year I got 14 wheels. And then after that, I didn't really like any of the <laughs> I didn't really like any of the wheels that they make. And I know XXR is going to hate this, but I just loved the 535, the five-spoke concave wheel that I'm still currently run running today. So instead of just getting a wheel that I didn't really like that much and putting it on my car, I did that one year. The year that the car was white with the orange wheels. But after that, I just decided I just want these wheels back. So instead, what I decided to do was take my next year's sponsorship and give it to someone that was helping me out. So the first year, I gave my sponsorship to Julian, and you know he was helping me at Slide Life. So he was able to get his own set of wheels, 10 or 12 wheels for free. Another year goes by, XXR's got their new wheel lineup. I don't like any of them. I'm just being snooty and I want to keep my five spokes. So I said, yeah, I think instead of sponsoring me another year, let's give this sponsorship this year to Michael Van Schellenbeck. And, you know, I put the two together. Frank said, okay, let's do it. I think it's great. And he appreciated that I was, was very honest with him and I let him know that, you know, I'm, I'm still representing XXR. I still have a sticker on my car. Even though I'm not really getting any benefit out of this relationship, Directly, it is helping me indirectly because now I'm able to help my friends and then they can kind of level up and then, you know, if I ask them for a favor, they can help me back in exchange. The next year, I was able to come full circle and give Max my sponsorship with XXR. So I got Max 12 or 14 free wheels in exchange for really him doing nothing but investing in me, you know, eight or so years previously. So it does, you know, come full circle and you need to keep that in mind. The people that really help you in the beginning, Certainly you need to pay them back and I'm telling you putting a sticker on your car does not pay them back. <laughs> it does not pay them back in the least bit. You need to put money in their pocket, make their life easier or make them, you know, ha enjoy, include them in doing fun things, whether it's driving or whatever they like to do. Back to SEMA here. This year I picked up quite a few sponsors. I was able to lock it in with Exidy. Exidy is a clutch company and I uh, learned from uh, that relationship quite a bit. I didn't establish enough communication in the beginning. And basically, it was what I would like to think of more as just a, I guess it was a sponsorship. Uh, basically, they just gave me a discount. You know, they said, we'll give you 30% off a clutch. And then, you know, I had to buy a clutch that was $3,000. Well, 30% off is still a really expensive clutch. But... You know, they helped me out by just giving me a discount. I needed a clutch anyway, so I was like, okay, maybe because it's such a big brand, they'll be able to share my media projects on their social network, and then that will help me kind of look more legitimate. So you'll see that in racing a lot too, is fake sponsors or sponsors that have a big name but don't really bring a lot to the table. And that was the case with me and Exidy. They have a big name, didn't really give me a whole lot, to be honest. You know, I would have loved to have a clutch for free and a spare and then maybe a couple grand but instead I got you know a discount which cost them nothing 
they got a sticker on my car, and they got a sale that they still made as much as they would selling to a wholesaler. So that's how it goes sometimes, especially in the beginning stages. You're just going to have to bite the bullet if that's what you want to do and go for it. And if you feel like the partnership is not a symbiotic or, or beneficial to you, then don't take it. You know, it's important to know your worth and know your value and remember that these companies that are potentially helping you, they really need to help you. If they're not helping you, then there's no reason. You're doing too much work. There's no reason to invest in helping them out when they've already got enough help themselves. So in the beginning, Lone Star was not a technically a sponsor of my program, but you know, has certainly helped me out with getting relationships going. Now, however, Aaron and I have blossomed into really good friends. You know, we've lived together, we've traveled together, and now it is a sponsorship. Uh, the exchange that he gives me is free entry free to events. And what I do is promote as best I can, get people to come out to the events, and then I'm also the announcer for Texas Street Legal. So I do have to work. It's not just free entry, you know, it's, it's a trade. So I would call that a partnership, right? We each do a little bit of something to help each other out. He saves me some money on events, and then I, in exchange, try and make the events better and bigger and more exciting to be at. So this video is getting a bit too long here. I'm gonna cut it up now into two or three parts. I'm not sure yet. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I hope that you know, you've know you learned something and you guys can use this information to hopefully help your own program at home. If you guys like this video, please subscribe below and comment and share and all that stuff. And I'm gonna be releasing one every single day. So check back again tomorrow and there will be the part two of this and then maybe even a part three on Friday and you guys will be able to watch the whole series kind of broken up a bit. All right. I can't leave you alone